here book too welcome back to my channel I'm gonna do something that I don't do very often on my channel these days anymore I'm gonna tell you about some of the books that I have planned for May. I don't often announce a monthly TBR because I feel bad sometimes when I tell you this huge stack of exciting books that I want to read and get you all hyped up and at the end of the month when I haven't read them I feel like I've disappointed not just myself but disappointed you but May is gonna be a big reading month for me or at least I plan for it to be a big reading month because it is the end of the Man Booker 50 reading challenge. I told you about the Man Booker 50 reading challenge earlier this year when it was announced that to celebrate 50 years of Man Booker prize winning, there would be a competition to read as many of the prize winning books as you could. I wasn't clear about the requirements, whether you had to read all the books this year in 2018 or whether they could just be books that you'd read over your lifetime. So I decided to challenge myself even further and go back and reread some of the prize winning books that I'd read before. So all the prize winning books that I've read, I'm gonna be reading them in 2018. This is the end of that challenge. So in May, I'm gonna be reading all the Man Booker prize winning books that I can get my hands on. I just went to the library. So this is a combined library hall and Man Booker prize winning challenge TBR for May. It sounds complicated it really isn't I'm just gonna tell you about some of the books that I have right now that are man Booker prize winning books that I'm gonna be trying to read in May and if I mention a book that you have on your shelf that you have on your TBR and you want to do a buddy read with me please let me know in the comments if you'd like to do that I already have one buddy read planned with Ka who is my faithful buddy read partner and subscriber here on my channel hi K you'll see our book is here I'm ready to start reading it next week so these are the prize winning books that I have on my TBR for May in order of oldest to newest first is the 1972 winner VS Naipaul's in a free state which is about two Englishmen who get caught in Africa and kind of have to exchange their life of privilege to a life of maybe captivity as they try to navigate through, I think this is Idi Amin's Uganda. And I have The English Patient by Michael Andante and Sacred Hunger by Barry Unsworth. Both of these shared the prize in 1992, which I think at that point was an unprecedented tie. This one's about a group of people at the end of World War II trying to protect or be protected by an English patient who is keeping some secrets from the war. And Sacred Hunger takes place aboard an African slave ship in the 1700s. The 1998 winner was Ian McEwan's Amsterdam. This one's about a woman dying and two of her former boyfriends who are also friends meeting and discussing maybe the relationship that they had with each other, but also the relationship with the woman. I'm not sure, but this is the book that I'm going to be buddy reading with Kay next week. Margaret Atwood won the prize in 2000 for her novel, The Blind Assassin, which also takes place at the end of World War II, and it's about a woman whose death uh, apparently was ruled suicidal, but her sister is trying to investigate whether it was an accident or a uh, murder. I chose Vernon God Little by DBC Pierre. This is a 2003 Man Booker Prize winner. I'd chosen this for the Run Right Reads Book Club last month, didn't get it, so I finally picked up my own copy and I'm gonna be reading it this month. This one's about a school shooting in Texas, which at the time when it was written was probably not as serious a problem as it is right now. So it'll be interesting to read this story from this current perspective. In 2006, Kiran Desai won for The Inheritance of Loss which is about an elderly man and his orphaned granddaughter and the relationship that they have as they interact with the other members of their family. I think that this is a cross-cultural book. Part of it takes place in New York City, part of it takes place in the Himalayas, so I'm interested to read the intersection of those two experiences. Anne Enright won in 2007 for this novel, The Gathering, which is about a group of siblings gathering after one of their brothers has died and about the secrets that may or may not have died with this sibling. The 2009 winner was Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantle. I got this one from my BFF last month. I'm looking forward to reading it. It is a huge book. It's over 500 pages and it is historical fiction. It follows King Henry VIII when he wants to annul his marriage and marry Anne Boleyn. So I'm looking forward to reading that story because I don't know too much about that history. Then the next year, Howard Jacobson won for the Finkler question, and I can't remember who it is, but every time I've talked about this book, someone has left a comment saying I shouldn't read this book. So I'm... Um, sure that I want to read it because I've been told not to read it. The novel is about these two men who were friends when they were younger and now that they've both been recently widowed they've kind of gotten back in touch with each other. That theme seemed to continue the next year because Julian Barnes won for The Sense of an Ending which is about a middle-aged man who gets back in touch with his childhood friends, one of them reaching out to him from the grave. 
I don't know about that, but this is a short novel. It's just 160 something pages. So this is probably the one I'm going to start with because it's an easy, it's an easy way to cross something off my list. In 2012, Hilary Mantel made history three ways with this novel, Bring Up the Bodies. It was a sequel to Wolf Hall, continuing the story of Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn. It's the first sequel to win the Man Booker Prize. She was also the first woman and the first British citizen to win the prize twice. So I'm looking forward to reading this one. It's not as big as Wolf Hall, but I think this is going to be an outstanding read considering that the judges probably had every reason not to let her win that year. And finally, the last book that I have right now that is a Man Booker Prize winner is also one of the books that I need to reread because it's a book that everyone who's read has loved. And I read it last year, read it kind of fast, didn't get everything out of it, have wanted to reread it ever since. And it is The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. This one is set in the mid 1800s during the gold rush era in New Zealand. It's about a, a young man who goes to find his fortune but stumbles upon secrets and murders and that is my man booker prize winning tbr for me i'm also going to be reading some other books i don't know when i'm going to have time but we'll talk more about those other reading plans later for now these are the books that i have on my list these are the books that i want to read need to read in may urgently so I just told you about a lot of books, but I'm going to list all of them down below. I'm also going to put a list of books that I wanted to read that are Man Booker Prize winners, but that I don't have access to right now, either because they're not at my library or because I just can't afford to buy any more books right now. So if you have any of those books hanging around on your shelf and you're just not interested in reading them, go ahead and send them my way. I'll leave my email in the description box so you can send me a message or leave me a comment if you want to read any of these books with me or encourage me encourage me let me know that you don't think i'm crazy so we'll talk in the comments and until next time happy reading bye